developed an instant passion for mosaics three years ago when she took her first mosaic class. And her love for this art form has grown exponentially ever since. As a physician, she immediately recognized and personally experienced the calming and healing effects that creating mosaics can provide both to healthy individuals and to those in needs of healing. Susan is truly a mosaic enthusiast who has taken several classes in different mosaic techniques over the past three years and has begun sharing her love for mosaics with others by teaching classes in different mosaic techniques last year. She loved creating mixed media mosaics using different types of glass and other materials to create unusual mosaic effects. Today, she'll be talking about the use of frit and epoxy sculpt to add texture and dimension to, mosaic, to her mosaic creations. And she's looking forward to sharing this with everybody. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Susan Allen. And I wanted to tell you that I have a helper. This, this is Bentley. So I'm not sure what he's going to be contributing, but he's keeping my lap really warm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, I am going to be sharing my screen with you, so give me just a second, and I think we're going here. Hold on. While you're doing that, Susan, I want to invite everybody to take a moment and, um, you, know, during, you know, during the meeting and just chat in where you're here from. So I know Holly's here from the West Coast, so he probably gets the, uh, probably gets the vote for the furthest, but... Um, you know, you never know. Carol might be up in Massachusetts. Carol Helmsley, she kind of looks like it anyway. Um, yep. So, yeah, just chat in where you're here from, you know, as, as you're kind of when you have a second. Um, so we can we can hear about that. All right. Susan, back to you. Okay, so I am going to be going through a slide set to teach you a little bit about using epoxy sculpt and frit in mosaics. This is something that I just kind of uh, learned on my own by trial and error. And when I had my first success with it, I fell in love with this technique. Um, and I'm going to show you an, a detailed example of how to do it. But I think once I show you some pictures, you're gonna see why I like this so much. Okay, so let's get going here. Okay, so by way of overview, I'm going to give you a little bit of background on both of these products, Epoxy Sculpt and Frit. We're going to talk about what they are, why you would use them in a mosaic, where you purchase them, and how much they cost. And then I'm going to talk to you about some very important things to remember about using them successfully in a mosaic. And as I said, I'm going to show you some examples of how I use them in a mosaic um, so that you might want to consider doing the same. Okay, so this is what epoxy sculpt looks like. It comes in two different containers. Uh, on the left, you'll see each one has a different letter. One is A, one is B. And on the right, I took the lids off of these two. And you can see that one is a different color than the other. And I'm going to talk to you about that in just a second. So what is this stuff? Okay, so this is a combination of a sculpting clay and a strong epo epoxy-like adhesive. It's made by a company called Aves Studio, and it can be purchased either from them or on Amazon. As you saw in the previous slide, it consists of two parts that come in individual containers. Let's go back to that. So part A on the left is the colored component. Part B on the right is the hardening component. And in this particular case, the color is gray. And let's talk to you, I'll talk to you about some other colors that are available as well. This is sold either as individual components, meaning that you can buy part A alone, part B alone, or you can buy it in a kit, which consists of both a part A and a part B. It, and it's sold in different weights, the weight ranges from a tenth of a pound to up to 20 pounds, which I think is way more than you're gonna need. Um, and I have personally found that the one pound kits are sufficient to use for several small to medium sized mosaic projects when you are using epoxy sculpt as an adhesive for frit. If you are going to be using it to sculpt 3D shapes, you are going to probably need more than that. It is available in 12 different colors from the manufacturer, and there are fewer colors that are available on Amazon. 
I personally have one kit each of white, black, and gray, and I find that that does meet most of my project needs. There are also three color kits that are available from Aves and from Amazon. Each kit has four different colors and the kits have names. One is earth colors, one is neutral, one is primary colors. And in those kits, there is one tenth of a pound of part A and part B for each of the four colors. So it's a very small amount. If you don't want to buy those color kits, you can also paint or stain epoxy sculpt to make your own custom color. And in the piece, one of the pieces that I'm going to show you, that's exactly what I did. One of the nice things about it is it adheres to almost any surface, whether that be glass, wood, metal, ceramic, whatever. It air dries so you don't have to bake it and it is waterproof within 24 hours of application. Here is some information about the cost of epoxy sculpt. And what I did was I gave you pricing from Aves the manufacturer or from Amazon. Aves provides free shipping for its product. And it also has a greater variety of weights of this product that you can buy. Um, Amazon primarily sells it in three weights, a quarter pound, one pound and four pounds. And I just put stars by the one pound product because that's the one that I use the most. You can see there that from Aves, it's about $20 for one pound. Amazon is a little bit more, $5 more, um, but they, they usually can get it to you a little bit quicker if you're you know, trying to get something finished in a hurry. Okay, so what are some important things for you to remember? It is very, very important that you follow the mixing directions with this product carefully. You want to use gloves when you are mixing it by hand because this is part epoxy, so you don't want this on your fingers. You're gonna use separate tools. I personally use popsicle sticks for parts A and parts B, and you're gonna scoop an equal amount of each from the, their container, and you're gonna mix it by hand. The bolded text on here is one of the most important things for you to remember when you're gonna use this product, and that is, you want to make sure that you mix or knead this for two minutes. So when I get it in my hands, I tell Siri, set a timer for two minutes. This ensures that both of the components are mixed and it allows the chemical reaction that needs to occur between the hardening agent and the coloring agent to be completed and ensure maximum adhesive effect. If you are going to be using it as a sculpting material, after the two minutes has passed, you need to let it rest for about five to 10 minutes so that you reduce the stickiness, which enables you to shape it easier and carve it easier. But if you are using it the way that I have used it, which is as an adhesive, I immediately begin filling whatever the space is that I want to fill and I shape it as needed. One of the key things that I found to be very helpful was I used a nonstick surface and you can buy like silicone craft sheets. For me, I just happened to have a whole bunch of leftover, pla you know those plastic divider sheets that you put into three ring binders? So I just grabbed one of those one day <clears throat> and it's fantastic for um, allowing you to shape your epoxy sculpt and also to mix it <clears throat> and it won't stick to that surface. You also want a set of dedicated tools to use to shape it. And I'm going to show you a picture of the tools that I use in a minute. Some of the properties of epoxy sculpt, you've got a working time of about one to three hours. You have maximum stickiness in the first 30 to 60 minutes. It does clean up with soap and water. And it's really important that you clean your non-disposable tools after each use. Throw the popsicle sticks away, <laughs> but the clay shaping tools you want to clean them with soap and water. Otherwise, you're gonna have what looks like concrete on those tools. Okay, so let's talk now about frit. Well, what is it? Okay, I'm gonna go over that in just a minute. And I want you to look at these two pictures. The one on the left, this is how frit can come from different manufacturers. So sometimes it comes in a little plastic baggie. Most of the time I get it in these little plastic containers with a screw top lid. And if you look on the left-hand side, you can see that this one kind of looks like it's made of big chunks as compared to the one on the right hand side that looks really fine, almost like salt that you would use in food. 
So the one on the left, if you go to the picture on the right, I took some out of each of the containers and put it down so you can see it. The one on the left is basically an extra coarse type of frit. And I'm gonna to talk to you in a minute about gauges of frit. The one in the very center there is coarse frit. The two on either side are medium gauge and the one in the right all the way on the corner is fine. And it looks sort of again like table salt. So what is frit? It is crushed sheet glass that's filtered through a screen. It's cleaned and it has multiple uses, most commonly in fused glass. It's also used in torch work and glass blowing. It's used to create patterns on surfaces. And with what I'm gonna show you today, it can add tremendous dimension and texture to a mosaic. Let's talk about the gauges. It comes in multiple gauges, and that is based upon the glass particle size after it's been crushed and filtered. There is actually a powder-like frit, which I don't find very useful in mosaics. It's just too fine. The fine is indeed like table salt. That was the white one that I showed you on this picture over here on the right-hand side. The coarse one has a consistency like rock salt. And then the medium is somewhere in between. I use a lot of the medium and the coarse because it has greater texture than the fine, but sometimes the fine is necessary. And I'll talk to you about that. So it can be transparent, opaque or opalescent, and it comes in many colors. It's sold by several different companies, and here are just some, Bullseye Glass, Delphi, Amazon, New Hampshire Glass Works. If you Google this, you'll, you'll find many, many companies that sell for it. I most often purchase from Bullseye because they have such a tremendous variety, both of color uh, and of gauge, or Amazon um, if I need a speedy delivery. Amazon does sell bullseye frit, but it's a little bit more expensive and the selection is more limited. The bags or containers that it is sold in are based upon weight. It comes in a bag from five ounces to five pounds. And the cost can be expensive depending on two things, the color and the transparency, but not the gauge, okay? If you're interested in the pinks, the purples, the pastels, the reds, those are gonna be more expensive, as are the opalescent colors. Um, but the gauge really doesn't matter. And here's an example, um, several examples. Let's say that you want to buy five ounces of cobalt blue medium frit or five ounces of lavender medium frit. Both of these were available on Amazon. You can see that the cobalt blue is $9.95. The lavender is a couple of dollars more because of the color. In the next example, let's say that you wanna buy a pound of plum transparent horse frit versus a pound of peach opalescent horse frit. And you wanna buy these from Bullseye. So the transparent is about $2 cheaper than the opalescent, okay? And the third example is sort of a combination of both of those. So gauge, doesn't matter, color and transparency do. Okay, well, why would you use these in a mosaic? Well, first of all, epoxy sculpt is a very moldable, strong, opaque adhesive that can fill in the spaces between pieces of tile or glass. It doesn't have an odor, it's easy to work with, and it can be molded into um, different shapes and fill curved areas. When it's used as an adhesive, a little goes a very long way. And that's why I said the one pound containers or one pound kits that I have bought, I think I bought them 18 months ago and I still have them, I'm still using them. Um, when it's, it's adhesive properties ensure that even very small objects or pieces of glass will uh, attach strongly to a backer. Frit can be used to add dimension, texture and, and sparkle to a mosaic. It can also enhance the realism of a, of a mosaic. And you can make custom colors and areas of color transition in a mosaic by mixing individual frit colors. Okay, so this is a piece that I made um, using frit and epoxy sculpt, primarily in the areas of this piece that signify snow on branches, one of which the bird is sitting on. And I'm gonna walk you through um, certain elements of this and how I did it. 
the steps that were involved, this was something that I made for the MSOP annual members exhibit. So it's a glass on glass mosaic, mosaic that was 12 by 12. And I completed and grouted the bird first. So the bird is actually um, made out of stained glass and I finished him first. Then I used eight different colors of stained glass and silicone adhesive to fill in the background areas, but I left vacant spaces for all the areas with branches and snow. Okay, so if we go back here, I filled in all these different areas second, okay? All of the ones that didn't have the branches or snow. And then my next step was I filled in the vacant spaces where the individual branches were not visible. I'll show you those in a minute. Followed by filling in the vacant spaces where the individual branches were visible. And then I sealed the whole thing with a well bond water wash. So there were two areas where I used epoxy sculpt and frit. The first area that I mentioned there was the areas where you could not see the branches. So there were several areas that you just saw the snow. And because I thought that was gonna be less complex <laughs> than these other areas, I took the easy route and decided to do that first because I was learning how to do it. So I did that area first. Then I did these areas where there are actually two components of epoxy sculpt here. So there's a base of epoxy sculpt, and then there is an epoxy sculpt branch that runs down the middle. So let's go through those. Well, how did I do this? Okay, so I needed the epoxy sculpt, I mixed it, I placed it in the vacant spaces, and I molded it to fit the space using clay working tools. For the areas where the individual branches were visible. I took additional pieces of epoxy sculpt and I rolled those little pieces into snakes, small snakes, on a plastic binder sheet and painted them with brown acrylic paint. So you can see those right in there. Okay. <clears throat> and then I picked them up and placed them on top of the epoxy sculpt base in each of those vacant spaces so that it would adhere. I then made small holes in the epoxy sculpt with a dental pick to better hold the individual pieces of frit. I sprinkled the frit over the area and pushed it into place by hand. And I selected the gauge and the color of the frit that I used in each area to convey either closeness, meaning you were closer up to the branch that the bird was sitting on, or farther away, meaning areas in a distance. So let me show you step by step how I did this. These are some of the tools and materials that you will likely need if you are going to replicate this technique. So here's just a piece of board. And what I wound up doing was just taking some scrap glass and I glued it on here so that we had a vacant shape that I can demonstrate to you. Here's the frit. These are the tools that I used to work the epoxy sculpt um, as I'm gonna show you in just a minute. This is the silicone binder sheet you know, that, you know, you can see this, it's like perforated, like you'd use it in a presentation binder. So I just ripped them out of there and decided I was going to use that as something to mold my epoxy sculpt. And then there's a dental tool that I used to poke holes in everything when it was done. So what was the first step? Okay, the first step was to take a popsicle stick. I labeled this one A and yes, this one's labeled B, but I forgot to turn it over. Um, and I took equal portions of parts A and B from the epoxy sculpt in popsicle sticks. I then put those two pieces together in a gloved hand and I started mashing them and kneading them. And I did that for two minutes. And at the end, you wind up with something that looks like a silly putty. And it's kind of, it's very dense, like a silly putty would be. I then took that material and I shaped it and placed it in the vacant space that I wanted to fill with the epoxy sculpt. I took my finger and smoothed it down into that area, making sure that it didn't go on, it didn't go over the glass. I wanted it to be exactly in the glass space that I had created. This is what it looks like when I've completely put it inside the area that I wanted to fill. This is one of the tools that I just showed you. This is a clay working tool. And I took that tool and I dragged it down here to sort of make a crater that is going to hold the branch that I'm going to put on there, the brown branch. I had a little bit of the epoxy sculpt left over 
So I took it and I rolled it out on my silicone sheet, my binder sheet. I rolled it into a snake. This is the longer snake. I then took acrylic paint and I painted it the color that I wanted. And for this example, I did it in green, but obviously for the bird, uh, the photo that, of the piece that you saw, uh, I did it with brown acrylic paint. I then picked that up and I placed it carefully in that crater that I had made with the clay working tools and I pushed it down to make sure that it was adhering to the base. I then took the dental tool and I poked randomly, I went through and I poked holes both on the, the branch part, the green part, as well as on the background epoxy sculpt part so that it would better hold the frit. I then went over and grabbed a pinch of my frit and I held it over the top and started sprinkling. And I sprinkled until the entire thing was covered. And yes, it looks kind of messy, but you take your finger and you push it down on the area with the epoxy sculpt until you've got that whole area covered. You'll see that a lot of it doesn't adhere. And so what you do is you pick, when you've got a pretty good amount that's on there and you pushed it down with your finger, I picked this board up and I turned it on its side and I'm holding it over the frit, the container of frit so that it catches all the leftovers because I'm gonna use those again. But now you can see that there's a fairly good amount of frit that is on the epoxy sculpt. This is what it looks like after one application. And I want you to look carefully here. You can see that there's some epoxy sculpt that doesn't really have frit See it in there, epoxy sculpt maybe up here that doesn't really have frit. There's some of the green that doesn't really have frit. So what are we going to do about that? Well, we're going to add a layer to that because I really like adding almost a third dimension and you can do that with this product. I'm going to talk to you a minute about why it's really important to seal your frit, but right now I want to show you how to add another layer. So at this point, I took a well bond wash and I mixed two thirds well bond to one third water and I literally painted that on this area until it was completely covered as you can see on the right hand side. Immediately after doing that I did the whole sprinkling all over again thing with the frit and now if you look carefully you can see that the areas that were sticking through before are pretty much covered. So this is after two applications. And one of the things that I love the most about doing this, this is a picture from the side, okay? So if, you, if I was looking down close to this piece, you can now see the dimensionality that uh, doing this adds. And it's almost like you have this entire, you know, con con convex um, surface on the top and it's covered with this really neat frit. Okay, so that was basically how I did it. And I wanna to talk to you about a couple of other things that I've learned now because I've done this with several different pieces and tried a lot of different materials. You can use it with adhesives other than epoxy sculpt, depending upon the desired effect. If you want an opaque adhesive, then I think epoxy sculpt is probably the best thing to use. But if you want a clear adhesive, I would suggest that you use silicone adhesive or clear DAP. And even with a strong adhesive like epoxy sculpt as a base, it's very important that you seal the frit in place to prevent the larger pieces from coming off. Now, I don't know if you realize this, but there's actually a spray form of E6000. And when I saw that, I thought, ooh, I've got to try that. Maybe that's the way that I want to adhere the frit to my, to my mosaics. Well, I'm going to tell you it did not work. Okay, so I had to learn that by trial and error. The well bond wash works fantastically. And if you apply two or three coats of the well bond wash, that's usually sufficient to ensure that the frit stays in place and it doesn't completely dull the shimmer of the frit, which is one of the reasons that I like adding it. All right, I wanna give you an example of using frit. This is in a non grouted mosaic. And I just quickly whip this up because I'm gonna show you um, contrast and compare in just a minute. So this was actually done using silicone as the adhesive. So I have a clear back instead of an opaque back.
that you would have with epoxy sculpt. And this is a comparison. I did the same design because I want you to see the difference. This is sort of your classic mosaic over here. Both of these are non grouted And then this, you have to decide, do you want to frit or not frit? <laughs> but, you know, this to me is beautiful, but I love this texture. I just think it makes it look real. It makes it look like a butterfly bush. Um, and so I'm starting to use frit more and more in my pieces. This is another example that I had done here. This was a mixed media piece that I did and I wanted to mimic the ocean floor. So what I did here was I mixed three different colors of coarse frit. And when I, when I adhered this, I actually used weld bond to adhere this. It worked fine, but it took me about six or seven washes to get it to stay on. And that was why when I found epoxy sculpt and I realized how well it was holding the frit, I preferred doing that because it cuts the number of sealant steps that I have to use. Okay, so what about some pearls of wisdom? Um, this technique can definitely enhance the texture and the dimension of a mosaic. Don't forget to carefully follow the mixing directions, especially the two minute knead and mix, it's very important. Don't do this with bare hands, use gloves. Clean your tools after using them with epoxy sculpt, unless you wanna to have to buy a set of tools every time you do this. Um, a small container of frit can go a long way. And then after the epoxy sculpt has dried, don't forget to seal it with two to three well bond washes and that should be sufficient. Okay, I think that's the end. <laughs> and yeah, that was fantastic. I love that we get to get into the nitty gritty, even when we're like so far away from each other. Um, so you got, I'm just going to let you know, you got a couple of people like saying beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work. And then I uh, have a couple questions. Um, so let's see. Oh, okay. So this was my question. Is it okay to work without gloves once the two parts are combined? And it sounds like you're saying probably not ideal. Do it. No, not I ideal. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. Uh, from Carol Tinkleman, can you put the epoxy sculpt directly on the wood? It is directly on the wood. Okay. It's directly Carol, on does the wood. That, does that answer your question, Carol? Uh, <laughs> so you put a base of epoxy sculpt directly on the wood, and then you made your branches. Correct. Well, why can't you just make your branches and put them directly on the wood? You certainly could, but the picture that I was working from, it actually had what looked to me like um, areas of, of different colors of snow along, and um, attached to each branch. So with some of those, what I was doing was I was using the base of epoxy sculpt and a different color of frit to mimic either gray, meaning there was less light on the white snow or almost a brown in the background. So it was capturing the area where the snow was hanging off the branches. Okay. Does that help? Okay. So you were doing it for, for creative ideas, not necessarily. And not also to hear the branch, correct. Yeah. And also it raises it up a little bit. Yes, it does. Yeah. It does. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, another question. What if you want to use Fred for an outside piece? Uh, what can you seal it with? So can you use frit outside and what can you seal it with? Boy, um, I haven't made a piece for outside. I think my concern with that might be um, it, any of the adhesives. I'll, I'll have to do some experimenting on this. Any of the adhesives, like if you were to use a silicone adhesive or a DAP, I don't think you can put that on top of the... Um, of the frit because it's basically going to lose the beautiful texture that you like. You certainly could put down a bed of silicone adhesive, push the frit into it, but you're gonna to have to realize you will lose some of the dimensionality because it'll have to be all the way pushed into that adhesive if you're gonna take it outside. Um, so I don't, actually I don't know that yet because I haven't, <laughs> I haven't made a piece for okay. outdoors. That's next. <laughs> Can you make your own frit? You know, it's interesting. I actually found a YouTube video of a guy making his own frit. And he took a blender, a household blender, and um, he took stained glass, broke it up with a hammer, 
<laughs> put it in the blender and blended it. Um, but he, you kill off your blender after yeah. about <laughs> after about ten times. You have to replace the blades of the blender, but it can be done. And then he had several different sizes of screens that had different filters on them. And he put stacked one on top of the other so that the, the biggest pieces of glass stayed on the top and then the mediums went through and then the smalls went through and then the, the powder went all the way to the bottom. Wow. So it is possible to do it, but I just don't know if I'd want to replace the blades in my, in my blender, you know, every few weeks or something. <laughs> Wow, that's cool though. Mm -hmm. um, does the paint produce the adhesive properties? Does the paint produce the adhesive properties? Reduce, reduce. Oh, reduce. Not produce. Yeah. I, have, I did not find that. I did not okay. find that at all, no. And um, I was a little worried about it because I thought it might act kind of as a sealant. But I think the fact that if you, if you do what I did, which is you take your finger uh, and you push it down gently on that piece, the pieces of frit will actually go into the painted pieces. Um, and I didn't have any problem with them okay. falling off of one area versus a painted versus a non-painted area. Okay. Um, so after painting with the acrylic paint, mm -hmm. then transferring it to the epoxy sculpt layer, is the paint still wet or is it dried at that point in the process? No, I did it immediately. I wanted to it's keep it as wet. wet as possible, right? So okay. I made the little snakes, painted them, and I immediately picked them up. So I did one at a time. I did one branch at a time. I didn't make a whole bunch of those little snakes and paint them and let them sit there. No, I did one at a time so that I could ensure that the epoxy sculpt was really sticky and that the paint was wet when I put it down. Um, okay. I use, this is from April, I use straight well bonds with Frit. Uh, why do you feel it is better to use a wash? Um, I just found that it applies easier and it, ha it doesn't pick the pieces, the loose pieces of frit up when you're trying to paint over it. There are going to be some that don't adhere. And for me, if I just put the, the plain epoxy sculpt down there, um, I found that it picked up more of the loose pieces than the wash did. All right. Um, what about pushing the frit into E6000 instead of uh, the epoxy? Yeah, I, don't, I haven't tried E6000 for this. Um, it, it's something that I used to use when I you know, made collage or other things, but I, I don't use it a whole lot in mosaics. The only thing I tried was that spray and I did not find that that was helpful. So you'd have to try that one on your own and see if it works. And uh, finally, um, oh, and uh, April mentioned C6000 is very toxic. Uh, Cynthia, uh, thank you. Cindy is saying, may not be safe to make your own frit, like watch it on YouTube, but don't do it at home. Uh, breathing in small particles of glass may be bad for the lungs, probably, if that makes a lot of sense. So uh, in addition to ruining your blender, it could in fact ruin your lungs. Um, thank you, Cindy. Um, all right. What a fantastic presentation. Great. Yeah. It was a pleasure. <laughs> yeah.